Hello, how are you today? It's Sharon here from iRestore Stuff over here on the Essential Stencil page, ready for another DIY adventure. Today we're going to be using the Angel Wings set. So I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. And I am just going to refresh my computer over here. Hi, Joy Sand. Joy Sand's watching. Um, making sure this is all set up correctly so that I can see your comments coming through. There we go. It's a sunny day here in Australia. It's been uh, quite, it's been raining quite a little bit here um, the past week or so. Over Easter, it was raining completely. I can see my trash in the background and <laughs> all my things. <laughs> um, hi, Donna. How are you from Washington, Wisconsin? We've got uh, Illinois. Hi, Charlene. If you are watching the replay today, just wanted to mention that for those watching the replay to comment the word replay in the comments and you have a chance to win a prize within the first 24 hours after the video goes live. Uh, right now, for those who are live with me, you've got a chance to win too. We're picking three prize winners at the end of the, uh, at the end. Uh, so stay tuned for that because it's always fun. If you missed the just the jumped on, we are going to be using the Angel Wings set. So um, it comes with two different shapes and I'm going to be showing you how to do raised embossed stenciling today. So if you have not done that before, stay tuned. If you have done that before, maybe you do it a different way. Maybe you use a different product. Uh, I might talk about some of the products that you can use. There's so many different things that you can use to do raised stenciling. Oops. <clears throat> now, um, let's just have a look at some of those. Yeah, I love the angel wings. Now, this is the first time I've gotten to use them. So I'm doing it on a, a couple of different rustic boards. So first of all, there's in Australia, there was a product here that I stock. Um, I'm a retailer for a bunch of different furniture paint kind of brands. And so if you're in Australia, you can get these off my website. But if you're in the USA, there's a couple of them that you'll be able to get from my Amazon store. So if you have not seen my Amazon store, I've got a whole section or a whole wish list just called um, signs and stenciling products that you can find. So um, let me see if I can probably pop that down into the comments there to show you that Amazon store uh, link. But the emboss paste, it's, uh, it's actually called emboss, is by Artisan. That's an Aussie brand. There's also the one that I'll probably be using today, Smooth Embossing Paste by Fusion. So that's an old label there because I've had it so long. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Yes, welcome to all the newbies. Thank you, Tracy, for mentioning that. So if you are new here to Essential Stencil, I've never seen one of our lives before. Welcome. So glad you could join us today. We're doing some raised stenciling. So it gives it a bit of a 3D look. So I'm just going through a few of the different mediums that you can use. This is also another product by Fusion called Fresco, and this is actually a powder. So you can mix it up with paint or um, to any paint, really chalk paint, any water-based paint I basically like to use. Uh, you can mix it up with the Fusion Mineral Paint. You can get any of these on my Amazon store also. Thank you, Irene, for sprinkling. That reminds me that I need to do the same. Uh, and share this with my page because I my page is called I Restore Stuff and I uh, have a blog there, irestorestuff.com where I teach you all sorts of furniture painting upcycling ideas and things that, um, oops, I'm just going to share to my page. Here we go. Sorry, you've got to concentrate when you're doing two things at once, don't you? <laughs> um, hi, Jean. Is it Jean Clifton? Yes, you wanted to learn about this, raised stenciling. So this is a powder and you mix it with the paint to create a thick texture. So, you know, paint is quite runny. So if we tried to do a, you couldn't really do a raised stenciling with just paint, unless some of the chalk paints, if you allow them to thicken, that could be possible, but you add that little bit of powder and it makes them quite thick. There are some other things that you may have around the house. Put, put in the comments, if you have used uh, some uh, raised stenciling techniques. What have you used? I'd love to see your ideas here in the comments. Uh, some people have used like a, uh, a tile grout. I don't know what you'd call it over there or like a plaster for walls or something like that. Um, 
what are your kind of names for that in the USA? I'm not sure. Because I'm from Australia, we sometimes call things different products, different names. So, um, okay, so let me just point you down here. We're using the angel wings today and I do have one that I have prepared earlier. Someone says it keeps freezing, but I made sure that I was on the right Wi-Fi today. So unless it's your um, internet, possibly. Okay, so the angel wings come in a couple of different styles. There's the wide up, uh, I, look, I think they're like going upwards and these are the ones that are folded down. So I'll show you one that I'm going to be doing this one today and I did this one last night and I want to show you how to do a glazed technique. So this is what we're going to end up with and I'll see if I can show you really closely. Sometimes it's hard to see the actual raisedness but see how that's kind of chunky and raised there. You can kind of see the 3D look and that's the angel wings using the emboss, um, emboss stuff that I can sell in Australia. Oh yeah, someone else is telling me they use the salt wash, which is similar to our Fusion Fresco, yeah. Uh, mix it with paint and you can do it that way. Let me see if there's any other ways that people are saying. Oh, there's my mum. She's let me know here, internet. She says it's all good there. So <laughs> if mum says the internet's okay, we're good to go. All right, so I want to get my stencil out, the one that I'm going to be using today. I've just painted this board using one of my furniture paints. It's our brand new Artisan Mineral Paint here in Australia, which um, if you're in the USA, there's Fusion Mineral Paint. You can get all, also that on my Amazon store. Julie says she just got the wings in yesterday. Wonderful. That's awesome. Dixie Bell mud is good too, Renee says. So yep, there's another few people just popping in what they use or what they've used for the embossing. So that's awesome. Now with my stencil today, I've just used a board. It's about the same size. And I think I just cut these boards to, they were just off cuts from an old piece of furniture, a TV cabinet actually, uh, that I had just cut up to create sign boards. So they've even got chunks and dings and nail marks and things taken out of it. So I don't mind that look. It's just rough and that's what it's going to be. Now with the angel wings I showed you just earlier, this is the one I'm going to show you how to glaze and how to add a little bit of depth. So right now it just kind of looks a little bit flat and you can't notice as much. And in fact, this, this medium crackled a little bit. Whoops, maybe can't see that so close, but it's quite raised in 3D. That's what we're going to end up with here. Um, so, can't remember what I was going to say. Never mind. That's right. So with the ones I did last night, I just made the straight wings down. Um, that's all I'm going to put on that board. This one, I thought I could add some words in from another stencil. So there's quite a few lovely faith-based stencils at Essential Stencil. Don't forget to use my code. I restore stuff and get your 10% off every time you order anything from Essential Stencil. That includes their amazing brushes, their tag, uh, wooden tags, all of the things. So I'm going to try using this set, which is the Love Never Fails set, which comes with three different stencils. Let me show you those real quickly. And if you haven't uh, seen these before, you might want to pop them in your cart. Love Never Fails, there's a beautiful wreath on it in the scripture verse where you find it. He restores my soul. Beautiful, another beautiful one. Oh, that would be lovely on there also. And I'm thinking minus the wreath, of course. And then this one here, we love because he first loved us. So there's some gorgeous stencils there, but also not just the um, words, but also the wreaths around. And you can imagine you can interchange those um, and change them up a bit. I was going to imagine this one um, and without putting the verse there, I was going to just put these words, love never fails, among the angel's wings there. There's a couple of things I want to do first though to just show you, uh, let me pop my glasses in on because that's always easier. Thank you guys so much for sharing, that's amazing, I love it. Um, lots of DIYers and crafters out there who would love to see this. So before I do the raised part, if you're doing raised stenciling and you're only doing one part of it raised, I want to do some other things to the board first. So do all your other things first because the raised stencil part, uh, because it's 3D and it's going to be still wet for a little bit, you want to do all of the other bits first. So we're going to be adding these words first 
And also I want to dry brush the board. Has anyone ever done dry brushing before? If you haven't, I'll explain that a little bit because I always love to uh, pop on some helpful tips to those of you who love to even paint furniture um, or just make signs in general. And um, dry brushing is a lovely technique that you can use to just create a weathered board look. I know um, Amanda uses this technique on a lot of her sign boards. Oh, and hey, a big shout out to Grace who finally got her Facebook uh, personal page back up and going. So Grace, if you're out there, we are so glad that you are back on Facebook, my friend. And so hopefully very soon she will be live again with Essential Stencil. I think she was just waiting on some business page technicalities. Um, but what I'm doing right now is dry brushing. So did you notice I just brushed most of the paint off after just dipping a tiny bit into the lid of just a white paint. This is Fusion's casement, one of their whites. Now it looks like I don't have very much on the brush at all. See, there's no, it's almost like I've just wiped all the paint off it, but there actually is. And I wanna start with less because you can always add more dry brush on top of it. But if I accidentally do too much and it's really difficult to kind of wipe it off, it is possible, but it's kind of, tricky. So um, yeah, a lot of you are saying you like the look of dry brushing. So what I want to do is just get my brush that I've just wiped all that off, kind of like stenciling, you're offloading a bit. Um, and I'm just using a Klingon flat 30 brush and I'm going to just drag it across the surface here. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. Let's just bring that a little bit closer. I'll stand up because it's easier to do that than try and zoom in the camera. But see that really subtle weathered board look and it hits over the top where there's a bump in the board it'll hit over the top of that so let me just see if I can do that again and I'm going back over that and you can see it's highlighting those areas where there's actually uh, faults in the or you know a bit of dings in the wood so just carefully going really lightly so I'm not painting it too hard I'm not pushing too hard but if you wanted more on you can you can actually push the brush down a lot harder so let me pull that back a little bit and see if you can tell the lights a bit shiny there but you can see where it's going over those bits that had some kind of glue or something on the board which you know I'm gonna have the, the raised angel wings over the top of that anyway so it's not going to matter too much if you've just joined us, we're making 3D embossed raised to stenciling today. So stay tuned for prizes at the end, of course. And if you know someone else who would love to watch this, I'd love you to sprinkle that. Hit the little share button and show some others. So I'm, I haven't dipped the paintbrush in at all. I'm just, in fact, just pressing a little bit harder as I go along just to make sure that I get all of that paint in on the brush going a bit sideways now just to make sure I've got some more and there we go it's a lovely fake weatherboard kind of a look so then I want to go over my edges and just create a little bit more of a highlight on those edges there and I'll hold that up a little bit closer so you can see and it Probably doesn't matter too much if you go that way or this way, but sometimes I like to do both because it's kind of putting the paint on the other side. Let me just see if I can show you that a little bit closer. So the edges are highlighted a bit more there also. Yes, Sue says she's so excited for Grace. If you haven't seen, Grace also has a YouTube channel, so you can catch her uh, videos over there also. I'm just going to go around the edges of this as well, just so that it's not that stark blue and the and looks so it doesn't look too different I almost have to get a little bit more on my brush and I also have a YouTube channel so it's I restore stuff on YouTube or Pinterest or Instagram I'm all over the socials also on TikTok if you're over there or if you know anyone who is there's a lot of fun furniture painters there showing before and after a DIY kind of things so you can follow me on TikTok. All right, there we go. It kind of looks like a denim washed denim look, doesn't it? 
almost looks like a pair of jeans with that ridge, you know, like stitching or something in them. That will be a fun backboard. So it's kind of looking rustic. I'll put my white paint away here. Uh, no, I know. I'm going to be using that to stencil my stencil. So the next thing I want to do, remember we're putting our angel wings down low and I want to put the words at the top here. So I'm going to put the words love never fails right about here. So I want to just make sure it's all going to fit nicely. You can see through the stencils here, which is great. <coughs> just have to pop my brush in the water so that that cleans. And I'm just going to use one of the essential stencils, stencil brushes here. Now these come in four different sizes. So that's the larger one right there, seven eighth inch. I guess that's the diameter. And I want to pull this out, but I'm first going to tape where I need that to be. So the dry brush is so, so dry that it's dried out really quickly. Um, but we can just, I sometimes just put the tape on my hand to make it not too sticky so that it's not going to risk tearing any, uh, tearing anything. Now the reason we want to put the words down first, remember, is because our angel wings are going to be 3D and they will take a lot longer to dry with the paint medium that we're using. So I'm going to take that out for the moment and I'm going to tape off where I don't want to be brushing. So I think I'll leave off the the scripture verse 1 Corinthians down there just for this one and also the L for love comes a little bit close to the wreath so we want to tape the, that off so that when I'm brushing that stencil here it doesn't accidentally go onto the wreath design okay and here's our stenciling tips that we always we could all, if for those of you who are regulars watching here you know that our biggest tip of all time is to offload your paint <coughs> so I'm offloading that until look there's hardly anything there you can always put more on then I'm going to swirl it I thought that we would do a bit of a um, shadowing technique sometime. Maybe I could do that on this one. I was thinking of doing the words in black so that they'd stand out a lot more. So what I could do is make this our shadow and for those of you who love to learn about new things and how to do shadowing, I could do a shadowing and create the white as the shadow and make the black words black. So I'll do that. So if you know someone who would love to learn 3D stenciling uh, using an embossing kind of paste or if you know anyone who would love to learn how to do shadowing using their stencils, please hit the little share button. Sprinkle the love. Okay, so I'm just swirling there. You can dab it up and down. That tends to take a little bit longer for me if I've already offloaded the brush a lot. I feel like I should have used a, a smaller brush for this pro, for this purpose. The letters are a little bit thinner and so um, the wider brush is actually really good for those larger stencils and then you can put a bit more on the brush. And the colour I'm using is just Fusion Mineral Paint Casement and I did post the link to my Amazon shop in the link in the comments there somewhere if you scroll up you might find it or just ask me and I can I always go on here later and answer your questions if you've got a question about what you're doing and I miss it um, yes yeah, Stacy says she'd love to learn this shadowing uh, so we'll do that today and we've also got some other live videos in, I mean replays of lives obviously uh, they're all in the video section of the Essential Stencil Facebook page right here. If you go into the video section, you'll find a few different um, times where we've done some of these different techniques. You'll also find each ambassador has like a playlist. You can have a look through our videos that way. So I know I did an embossed stenciling for a big 
bottom um, vertical porch sign. That was one of the first times I did a live using that technique of embossing. And I'm going to do that again here soon. If you've just joined me, we're going to do the angel wings around here in 3D. We're going to make them raised. Okay, so I've done my white. And like I said before, I've just decided spontaneously. If I had a thought about it, I would have probably shifted the words slightly. But we're going to only shift the stencil ever so slightly that it won't be too hard to tell uh, that there's... A shadow but we just want a really subtle little shadow at the end. Let me wipe my fingers off. Okay so there's our Love Never Fails. I'll let that dry quickly. Um, so remember we're going to have the angel wings around the outside here in 3D but I just wanted to put that up a little bit closer so you could see. Oops I've got my... So nice crisp lines and that is because I've offloaded the brush as much as I could. So we did that first. Again, a nice rustic board look. Now we're going to use a black color. So I'll just pop this over. I'll show you how I do that. Um, and look, I'm not going to worry too much. I mean, normally you would want to clean this off so you don't get the white mixed in with the black. But I really don't mind if it has a charcoal -y gray look, which it could have that when I'm finished. Uh, but what we want to do I'm just going to go ahead and use that black <coughs> straight over the top. So what I mean is, you can see on that stencil it hasn't been cleaned and I've just used white paint on it. So what could happen is I could mix that in as I'm going. So if you don't want that to happen, definitely clean your stencil first, let it dry. But because we're on a live right now, I don't have time to sit here and waste your time <laughs> and wait for that to dry. So I'm just going to go right ahead and go over the top of it. So I'm just using a black paint and I might use a different brush that's all so I'll put that one in here let me see what else we've got this is a slightly smaller one so the brushes you can also get them using my code I restore stuff at essentialstencil.com and the links are all in the description of the live also essential stencil has just popped in uh, a pinned post to where you can actually get the ones that I'm using today for these sets so for shadowing technique, making this so that you can see, I'm putting it exactly over the top before I move it anywhere. So to create a shadow, you're just going to shift it ever so slightly to the side, and it doesn't matter which side. So I'm just going to go slightly this way. It's my left, probably your right. And you can see there's a tiny weeny gap. So can you see how I'm shifting it when I shift it across? Oh, look at that. That looks quite effective on the video. But I'm not going to shift it that far, that's a little bit too far. You can just shift it across or you could do both shifting it across and shifting it up slightly because the white's going to be the shadow. I like the shadow to be under so if I shifted it down the shadow would be on top if that makes sense. So I'm just going to shift it again slightly across and slightly up. So hopefully you can see how that works. Whoops. <coughs> Once I've got it in the right place, oh, I'm going to have to do that again. Sorry, guys. Slightly across, slightly up. Then I can put my tape down. In fact, I might just add another little bit of tape down to the bottom there to make sure it's really secure. Okay, now I can go with my black paint and I'm just going to, whoops, dip it in, wipe it off, and then make sure I've here we go again. I have to forgot to shake my paint. So sometimes if you're using a mineral paint or a uh, chalk paint, you'll need to just shake up to mix those ingredients in really well. Because otherwise, did you see how watery that was over here? I don't know if you can see that because I've just used what was sitting on the top. It kind of separates a little bit. This is the Artisan Mineral Paint from Australia but um, you can also get the Fusion Mineral Paint over there in the USA. And I've got that on my Amazon store there for you. <coughs> there we go. That's looking more black. Now, like I said before, this could turn out gray because I'm going to be mixing it using a on top of the white. And I don't mind that. <coughs> it's gonna work it a little bit more until I can see a little bit more black. And I do want to make sure that I've got most of that removed because I don't want the bleed through. 
So as well as uh, offloading, we're actually kind of working the paint into the bristles of the brush. I think it's just about right now. It's easier to add a couple more layers than it is to get too much on your brush and risk it bleeding underneath. So it is turning out a lovely grey colour, which I don't mind. If you did want it black black, <coughs> I would make sure that you cleaned your stencil off, but also probably don't put it over the top of the <laughs> white that I've just already offloaded onto. So hopefully the colour will stay a bit more consistent. And you should be able to see a little white shadow around the edges once we lift this up. So stay tuned. Also guys, if you are first time watching our uh, Essential Stencil Lives here, we give away prizes. Essential Stencil are very generous and they give away three stencils prizes at the end of our lives. So stay tuned for that. And <clears throat> let us know in the comments for sure if this is your first time watching a live or if you've bought Essential Stencils, if you've uh, just ordered some recently for the very first time and you're looking forward to using them, I'd love to know that too. Someone earlier said they've just bought these angel stencils. If you've just joined us, we're going to be doing 3D angel wings on top of this signboard that I'm making here. So I just showed you, a, I'm showing you right now, if you've just joined me, a shadowing technique. So we've painted, we've done white underneath and we're adding black to the top. It really does make it stand out, like it makes the letters pop when you've got that little shadow underneath. And you don't need to do it in black and white, you, don't, you can do it the other way around. All you need are two very contrasting colours, so one really light colour and one really dark colour. And you can also use the other way around, as in I could use the black as the shadow and the white as the light on top. You could do it that way also. Remember when you're doing it that way, that once you've done the black first, you may need a few extra coats of that white on the top. I mean, of the black on the top. No, sorry, of the white on top of the black to actually cover it. Because if you're painting white on top of black, it sometimes takes a few coats to cover that. So that the white isn't, you know, you're not seeing through and seeing the black underneath. Okay, hope you all had a lovely Easter. <clears throat> Rained a lot of the time here, but for the most part it was great. I had one of our sons flew up from Melbourne to visit us, that was lovely. And um, as you can see, my, my cardboard background here has some artwork on it. There's <laughs> Little bits of art all the way around because uh, both he and my daughters love to do arty things and so they just got my paints out one day and had some fun uh, doing canvases and all, all sorts of fun things. And you know, they're all young adults so it's not just for kids is it? <laughs> art and craft. <coughs> okay, so I've got my black on there now. I'm just going to have a peek, make sure that, that that's covered. Yep, I'm happy with the way that's turning out. So let me just do the big reveal here. You'll be able to see that shadowing effect on there. So hold that up close. You can see how that white is a gorgeous shadow underneath the black. I know when I say shadow, it usually should be a darker color underneath, but you can do it either way. It just makes it have that little edge, makes it really 3D looking. So that will suit really nicely with our raised stencil. So let's get a moving on with that. Yeah, tapes off here. And we'll use an embossing paste to do that. And I will wash my stencil later. Pop it over there. Look, the sink is really handy. Okay, so, and the other thing I'm gonna show you is, I just wanna make sure that that's quite dry. Um, is the one that I did earlier here. If you've just joined me, here's one I did last night. So one, this one's all dry now because when I demo this one on how to do it, 
um, I wanted to use a, use a dry one to be able to show you that uh, glazing technique to make sure that, to get that glaze going into all the cracks and crevices. I don't know if you can see that 3D looking angel wings there. So isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to just leave this one like this, just as plain angel wings. I've popped a, um, a little hook on the back already so that it is hangable just like that. Uh, but I'll show you that at the end. What I want to do now is get these angel wings in place. So remember the angel wings come in two different designs and I can see through where my words have gone there and it's perfect. So that shadowing didn't really shift it much at all. And maybe I'll pop them down slightly. So hopefully, yes, we've got the right place and I'll just reuse <laughs> recycled tape to just tape that in place to make sure we want this to be really quite secure. Uh, we don't want those going anywhere when, when we're embossing. So we're using an embossing paste. The one I'm going to use today, just let me put my lids on things, make sure paints don't dry out. <clears throat> if you are in Australia, that's the colour of the blue that I used. It's called Hampton's Blue in the uh, Artisan Mineral Paint range. Um, finished with the black. So, uh, we also, so we have an emboss, um, any kind of emboss paste. And you guys actually did write in the comments earlier some of the things that you also used. You can use a few different types of mediums. <coughs> yes, um, Renee, the embossing paste I'm using is smooth embossing paste, pearl. So it also, also has like a pearl metallic-y kind of look to it. All right, it's kind of hard to show you Let's see if I can point it down any further. It'd be good if you could have this angle of going across here like this, but that's okay. We will go with this. Uh, now with this embossing paste and with most of them, you can actually add paint to that to create a color. And I could actually, you know, mix it in a dish or something similar. If you wanted to, you can mix it with a color to create a color or you can actually um, put it on first and then paint over it after. I've done it both ways and both are quite effective um, and you can do that for whatever different reasons. I'm just going to go straight out of the jar today, I think. I've not got a lot left in the jar. In fact, it's kind of going a bit because there's been so much air in this jar and I don't use it that often. It's going a little bit uh, dry, getting a bit dried out. So this is the scary part. <laughs> But it's okay, you can always sort of, there's no accidents, right? We call them happy little accidents, don't we? What's his name? Bob Ross always says with art. I'm just going to lay that down on top of there for a second and I'll then pick up a bit. Whoa, see, that's what we don't want to happen. We don't want it to lift up as we're going. So I'm going to get going on the outside of my stencil and I'm just using a palette knife. So I've got some of these listed on my Amazon store also. You can find them there. Um, and it doesn't have to be really, really, really high. It just can be, you can see some of the stencil coming through there. I'm just really slowly going over it. And you just don't want to push too hard. It's a little bit like icing a cake, really. So I'm not trying to push it too hard or that might risk it going underneath the stencil. And to me, I don't mind if it has little trowel marks through the wings either. I'm happy with it just kind of gliding on like this. And I'm gonna just run this one down as well. Run it over. Grab a bit more. Um, Maggie said, where do you buy the paste? I stock this in my store in Australia, but I do have an Amazon link to my Amazon shop that you can get some there. The Fusion Mineral Paint uh, Smooth Embossing Paste is what I'm using. Um, now, if you go to my Amazon shop link, there's actually a few different lists there and there's one called simply uh, something like Signs and Stenciling ideas and I've listed there a whole bunch of products that I've used for stenciling signs and for anything from boards that I've
put things on, uh, tools that I use for stenciling and sign making. It's all right there in the Amazon shop. I think that um, there's one. Okay, so I'm happy with the, the layer of thickness on that. Oops, I feel like I need to just scrape a little bit off. Re remember again not to go too... I'm going to turn this around so it's easier for me to do with my right hand this way. Um, yeah, you can always just scrape a bit off. So I scraped the excess off that one and I'm just placing it down on this one. And it feels like it could go under the stencil, but it's not. Well, I hope it's not. <laughs> the last one I tried, it, went, it worked out fine. Um, if you missed it earlier, I'll show you the one I did last night because that will be that one's all dry and ready to glaze. So I can show you how to glaze to make that uh, stand out and go into all the crevices. <coughs> Oops, says my videos paused hopefully it didn't pause for you okay scraping it along there um, yeah Rhonda says I think you can use spackle if that's what you call it yes you can use all sorts of things they will all have different um, different ways of looking as well they'll all sort of look differently but it basically is the same idea some might have a bit more of a rough Finish. The one I used yesterday actually created a lovely crackle. So I'm looking forward to the glaze getting into all the little crackles in it. And I'll have to take some nice close up photos of those crackles so that I can show you later. If you're in the Stencil of the Month Club, I often will post, I think I forgot last week to post my pictures in there of what I've done in the live and how they've turned out and some close up shots and things. But I also post them on my Instagram on iRestore stuff. And I also post them on my Facebook page. So if you have a look there later, I'll show you that. All right, I think I'm going a bit crazy here and I feel like I want it to look smooth, but it's not. But that's okay. All right, we're ready for the, the taking off. Now the key to taking off this is just not to bump it. You just need to lift straight up. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm finished with that now. I can pop that in the water. And because I've, got this here I'm just going to literally well, I'll lift it up your way so you can see how this goes all right ready one two three and you can feel that paste kind of coming off now I've just got to remove the sticky <coughs> okay see if we can see that 3d there you can see that there we go Uh, someone said, can it be sanded if you want it smooth? Yeah, you can sand it, but the sanding's kind of likely to get into the cracks and crevices there. You can kind of see how deep that goes in some places and other areas is not so deep. It's sort of raised and lifted a little bit in some of the places. Um, yeah, good question on how to clean the stencil after the embossing paste. Same way you would the paint. So I'm going to actually do that now because I don't want it to... Uh, remain there otherwise it's going to get all you know rock solid and hard uh, but what I do usually do is to scrape scrape away some of that excess before I actually you know uh, run it anyway because it does have a bit of excess but for time's sake oops I've got my microphone trailing behind me I'm just going to reach into the sink right behind me and literally fill it with water and let that sit in there so that it remind me that the taps running <laughs> remind me that the taps running behind me okay so this is our embossed and see that you can see the blue the dark of the blue in behind the angel wings on that one um, and how lovely that looks so this one that i did yesterday i am mindful the sink is running behind me so i'll turn that off in just a second Okay, here's the one I did yesterday. See how it doesn't stand out as much as this one? So I'm gonna show you how I glaze that. Okay, I think we've got enough water to cover that up. That'll just tide me over until I finish the live and then I'll definitely be washing that off immediately as well as all my other stencils. Okay, so the glaze I'm gonna to use today is our, you can use um, any kind of glazes. 
and we've got the Fusion Clear Glaze and the Fusion Antiquing Glaze. So the Antiquing Glaze, it's basically the same as Clear Glaze but tinted brown to give it that lovely antiquing look. So we could use that one or we can use Clear Glaze and mix it with any other colour you like and it will create a tint with that colour in it. So the other thing that I do have on the Amazon shop is this um, Metallics, the rose gold. I popped that in there so that you'd know where to find it too. <coughs> and um, I don't know if we've got, whoops, excuse me, there, but I'll just pop that link in. That's the Amazon shop there that you can see where that is. So what we do is we just mix a little bit of the clear glaze in with A bit of paint so I'm going to use a rose gold and just create it should give a nice shimmer also okay <clears throat> which those metallics and the shimmeriness doesn't often show up really well on the video but I'll try and take some photos to where you can sort of see that now with the glaze we really don't need a lot just grab that with my finger right there so I didn't bring anything else to wipe it with So see, I've just got the tiniest little blob. So the, the ratio that I generally use with a glaze is about one tablespoon of glaze to a teaspoon of color. So my color is this rose gold and I'm literally going to just use a brush that I'm gonna use for the glaze. <clears throat> and I'm going to just dip my brush in it because I don't even have a tablespoon. I've probably only got a teaspoon of clear glaze in that. It is clean, by the way. This is just stained paint um, in my little dish. So I'm going to just dip my rose gold in there. It's a bit thick at the moment too because I've let it sit for so long. And I'm going to mix that in with the clear glaze. So at the moment it probably looks a little bit like a brown or a rusty pink colour to you on the video. But it is quite metallic looking. <clears throat> yes, um, Judy's just asking, do you mix paint or what with the glaze to colour it? So yes, this is just a fusion paint but it happens to be a metallic colour. So you can use plain colours with your glazes and that creates a lovely effect too. So I'm going to just glaze over the entire piece uh, just for the effect of it. You can see that, that the white in the background there, I'm not sure if you can see, you can see some brush strokes on the surface because I've used a chalk paint and I've wanted that brush strokey look. Um, the, then there's the raised stencil, which is also um, quite got some cracks in it. I don't know if you can see those little crackles close up, but it has some crackles in the medium that I used when it dried. It was almost like a clay. So I'm going to wipe off my glaze on the edge because I don't need very much on my brush at all. In fact, this, this brush load is probably going to do the whole board. And I've got a wet cloth and I should have had a dry cloth also. What can I use? I just might have to use my wet cloth. Maybe a paper towel might work. Let me see. Or I can just use this cloth <laughs> and I can wash it off later. Okay, so I've got my rose gold mixed in with my clear glaze. <clears throat> and this, uh, the clear glaze is actually by Fusion, Fusion Mineral Paint. You can get that in the USA. And you can get it on my Amazon store. All right, so I'm going over the entire piece. And remember that it's going to look quite stark and like, I mean, it's going to look quite like there's lots of it. But I want it to get right down in those cracks and crevices. I'm going to work in sections because I want to get it all down in the cracks of the angel wing. A little bit more. So with the glazes, you've got a little bit more open time, which means it then paint. So it means it gives you a bit longer for it to dry. So I'm getting it right down in there. I'll do one. And going all over. And I did have some kind of wood look uh, on here. You probably may not be able to see that. Okay, so painting the glaze on and then I'm going to wipe it back. If I want to wipe it more, um, if I don't want a lot off, then I use a dry cloth and I'm just using a lint-free cloth and you're dragging it across the surface like that. Usually you would go in the direction of the wood grain 
or you know it's sort of just in one direction that kind of helps the glazing factor and this is going to have a lovely rose gold shimmer to it if I want to remove more I'm going to use a wet cloth so it's sort of not coming off as much as I'd like it to so I'm just going to get a little bit of my wet cloth and drag it across a little bit more I'm just going so lightly because I don't want to ruin the effect of the glaze on the surface I want it to still look a bit glazed Let's see there we go I could go back the other way also and we're just going ever so lightly so if I was to go really heavy I would actually wipe that glaze all off so let me show you a little bit closer maybe you can see the metallic maybe you can't I tried to remove it a little bit from the angel wings so that the glaze would sit down in the bottom so I think I will remove it a bit more from the actual top the high points of the wing which is the raised part so that it sits down then a bit more into those crevices and the cracks on it there's so many different options when it comes to glazing and you know raised stenciling or even just doing it plain there's so many different options for doing that wing there so you can see the raisedness and hopefully that glaze you can see that down there it does change the whole look of the piece doesn't it so it looks gorgeous this way but also looks lovely this way so there's see there's so many different options so I'll just do that again to finish it off going probably start on this end rubbing the glaze on and I'll probably get the glaze onto the edges as well so that it's got that same tinted look smooshing the glaze down into the crevices where it's kind of got the raised look we've just joined us we're making 3d angel wings and I've showed you on this one over here how to do some shadowing techniques so if you missed that you can go catch the replay and if you are watching the replay you can comment the word replay within the next 24 hours and have a chance of winning a prize also but don't go anywhere because we're about to give out some prizes at the end of our live so this is a glaze it's clear glaze mixed with a rose gold metallic paint so I have post posted a link there a couple of times for my Amazon shop where you can find those from fusion and <clears throat> now I'm going to just go straight on and use my uh, wet damp cloth to just remove some of that glaze you're removing the excess so that it sits in the crevices and I'm going to go a little bit heavier on that angel wing part so when I come to here I'm actually trying to get more off so that the glaze sits in the crevices hope that makes sense and we want that center bit where we kind of joined it <laughs> to look a little bit the same now it creates a lovely but it's sort of quite uneven the surface that's the idea of the glaze it's almost like a weathered look about it okay let's see rubbing a little bit extra where those it's really colored that and you will see that shimmer in the light you can even dry brush some metallic over the top of that so you can see how that's really changed the look of it Let's see if I can show you on the side that was the white color and now it's kind of glazed look and I'm telling you it looks a whole lot better in person I think than it does on the video but it looks almost like an antique look doesn't it with that but now I can see the rose gold now remember how we did that dry brush technique over here on this um, board on the background of the board I showed you how to do dry brushing on this background here so that it leaves that lovely white look over the blue I want to try dry brushing over the top of this 
just to finish it off. Just a little spontaneous thought there. I think that will look nice. Using the white, I'm going to add a bit of dry brushing to that glaze. And that will just hit those highlights on the top. Um, and that kind of dries fairly quickly. Pop my glaze brush in there. I have to find another brush to do my dry brushing. Actually, I was going to glaze the edges. I'll do that after. So again, to dry brush, I just dip a tiny bit on the ends of the bristles, making sure my wood is clean. And I'm going to offload as much paint as I can. <coughs> Comments here. There we go. Yes, um, I did do the blue one first. If you missed this one, this is what I showed you how to do earlier. So you can just go catch the replay. Uh, and while you're there, comment the word replay. That's still wet. So I showed you, oh no, yeah, that's the one that's still wet. So I showed you how to do the raised edges. Right now, my brush is really dry, as dry as it can be. And I think that this is, hoping that this is dry enough to be able to show the dry brushing. I can see that inside it's not, but that's okay. We're going on the, on the tops. So I'm just going to drag my brush ever so lightly. Let's see if I stand up and show you this here. Just dragging it so lightly. Now I can't see anything yet. <clears throat> so then I can go a bit heavier. And maybe a bit heavier. Not working. Oh, hang on. That's just, oh yeah, I can see it. I can see it, but it's very, very faint. So that's why I like to do things very lightly first. Then if it doesn't work, you can add more. But if you put too much on, it can ruin it. So I didn't want to have too much on. So I'm just going to go, see how it just, the white hits the very tips and the edges of the wing on the high points. So this is leaving a little bit of a highlight there to go on top. There we go, that's looking like it's doing what it should now. So this is just dry brushing. It's almost adding an extra dimension or an extra 3D look. So can you see that? Just hitting those high points really, really lightly with the white paint. And it's called dry brushing because you literally have to offload your brush until there's hardly anything on it be effective. Now I'll just do it on this one wing so you can kind of see that real difference that it's making. Sorry, I just had to pull it down away from the camera so I can see what I'm doing a bit more. <laughs> okay, that's, now you should be able to tell. I'll hold it up close so you can tell the difference between the two. You can see that already. So right up close. See the tips of the wings there. You can see the dry brushing on that one side. How it's just hit the tops. And so it's got a real depth and dimension to it now. So we can do that and continue that on the other side. Who wants to go out and try something this week? Out of the different tips that I've given you today, what do you think you'd like to try this week using the stencils? And it doesn't have to be the angel wing stencil. It could be any of the ones you order. So um, <clears throat> don't forget to use my code. Uh, I restore stuff and you can get 10% off or you can use the links here on the page. That should give you 10% off automatically using my links here. Um, of all of the stencils, all of the brushes, the wooden tags to make wooden tag signs, all of the things. So. I'm kind of going every which way, only because I just want to get the edges of this raised part. So we should have a little bit of rose gold metallics in there. Let me see. Someone else is going to try the embossing paste technique and get the wings. Someone else is going to try the dry brushing over the wings. Definitely. Great idea. Embossing technique. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, the dry brushing does. It really makes it pop, doesn't it? So that there is finished. So stay tuned and we're going to announce prizes any second. Essential Stencil will announce 
um, the winners of our prizes. Let me see <coughs> if I can just hold our finished products up for you to see. So with this blue one, I may just wait for that to dry and I think I'll just leave it just like that. So here's that one with the 3D look right there. I don't know if you can see how raised that is. Um, and then we, I taught you how to do the drop shadowing on the stencils. So see the words, love never fails, how it's got a little shadow behind it. I'll show you how to do that. So if you missed that, catch the replay. And um, on this one, I showed you how to glaze and how to create a glazed look getting in between all of the edges and then how to do a highlight on the top parts to dry brush that. So those are 3D angel wings. I loved using those angel wings. Have not used those, that stencil yet before. So they did have a few left in stock. So grab them today if you would like that. And I am just going to pop you up in a second. Hang on a second. If you can see me and I can see you. Thank you so much, guys. If you enjoyed that today, I'm just um, checking to see if Essential Stencil has put our winners up there. Let me know if you can see that they've posted the winners because I can't wait to announce who they are. So there's three lucky winners, I think, from today's live. Janet says she loves the blue ones. Amazing. Someone loves the wings. Can't decide what one you like the best. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit hard to decide, isn't it? I think they just make both great signs. And see, even from a distance, you can see they're just gorgeous angel wings. Congratulations to the winners. So our winners today, congratulations to Francis Downs, Sandra Lebonski, and Tracy Williams-Willow. Congratulations to those people. You are our winners today. And don't forget, if you're watching the replay, comment the word replay and you can get another chance at winning a prize during the next 24 hours of the replay. So those are our two stencil projects we did today. Learned lots of different, we went through lots of different tips today. So if you did miss any of those, go catch the replay, rewind, because the replay is always fun. You can just kind of fast forward, fast forward to the bits that you missed. Um, so that's easy and uh, you'll be able to do that. I'll be back next week. Now, I believe next week, I will be showing you the Stencil of the Month Club stencil set. So if you're in the Stencil of the Month Club, we'll be doing that, Melissa's birthday set. That was, that's such a fun one. If you're not in the club yet, use my code, I Restore Stuff, and you can get 50% off your first month. So I can't wait to see you. I will post some pictures of these on my Instagram later. So go check that out, I Restore Stuff, on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, you can go to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I would love to see you at any of those places. So catch you till next time. Bye.